I'm going to be refuting the speech that physician-assisted suicide should not be legalized in the United States. My advocate's claim states that physician-assisted suicide would be helping and encouraging to end one's problems with limited options. This was worded in a way that is misleading and unclear as to which side is the force because of the use of the words helping and encouraging. My claim is that physicians using suicide is beneficial when all other options have been used. My advocate supports this claim by describing the job of a physician as one who helps patients deal with their pain and improve mental health. This is true, but they are also the ones who can insist in deciding when one has had enough suffering. He then makes a sweeping generalization by stating that those who are faced for who those who are faced with deciding for PAS are often dealing with poor care and unrecognized psychological help. Although although this may be true in some cases, PAS is offered when all options have ran out and not out of laziness to take the easy way out. My advocate's secondary claim is that PAS devalues human lives, and he backs this up by saying that those who do not have access to different forms of help may see this as their only option. However, in a workable system, PAS should only arise after exhausting all other treatment options. With the appropriate procedure, PAS would not be considered the only option and would be only used if completely necessary. Instead of devaluing human lives, PAS is more of a relief to use as a conclusion to seemingly never-ending suffering. A website called The Odyssey describes Brittany Maynard, who is a 29-year-old 20 year woman who was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer. She suffered a long and hard battle trying to survive, and she finally chose to end her life with pills that a doctor gave her. She was able to choose when she wanted to die, and she was able to die in the arms of her loved ones. This gave Brittany a more valuable life to herself and those around her, because she was able to die by choice instead of the inevitable brutal death that her illness would have provided. This relieved a bit of suffering from everybody involved in the situation. My advocate also gives a claim stating that legalizing PAS is a violation to the natural rights of life. This is more of a value claim and one's opinion of value cannot be refuted. In conclusion, PAS should be a lawful medical procedure for competent terminally ill adults because it is a compassionate response to relieve the suffering of dying patients. All right, well, you kind of start by suggesting that the claim isn't very clear, but then you take a pretty clear position on it. So the lack of clarity doesn't seem to be an issue when it comes to uh, what the secondary points are. Your whole argument on the first point seems to be that uh, physician-assisted suicide is used only when other uh, options are exhausted uh, and that that's why it's necessary. I don't remember exactly what the advocate's argument was on this point, but there's not any demonstration that other means have been exhausted. Obviously, uh, somebody's life isn't going to be uh, uh, continued. Uh, they're, they're going to die. They've got a terminal illness. That part's true. But uh, the notion that you'd have to have physician-assisted suicide as a way to alleviate pain, deal with uh, uncertainty, create a sense of control, allow people to be uh, in contact with their loved ones, seems to assume that no other systems do that and there's no explanation about why other systems don't allow those sorts of things to happen. There's a presupposition that uh, PAS is the answer for these things and you say when other things have been exhausted, well are they have, have they in fact been exhausted? You use the case for instance of Brittany Maynard uh, on the second point to suggest that uh, this is something that's desirable because she had control and she didn't face uh, the brutal death. 
well, why would her death have to be brutal in the present system if, in fact, there are uh, treatments for pain and suffering, if, in fact, hospice is available to her? The only thing that she wouldn't have had control over is when she actually died, and why that's important isn't really explained. Uh, when you say on the last point, well, it's a violation of a, vi a value argument, you can't argue a value argument, well, then why do we care when somebody gets to decide when they die? That's a value argument also. Uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure that you've got the uh, right assumption here. Value arguments can be uh, disputed. The question is, do you have adequate criteria for disputing that, and is there a reason to believe that the criteria that the other side is using is inadequate? Uh, and that doesn't really, you know, we really don't get much confrontation on those kinds of issues. Um, there's a lot of assertion on uh, the need for a physician-assisted suicide. Uh, just, I, you know, and like I said, I don't remember what the advocate had in terms of their evidence. You don't really refer to any of their evidence. You just kind of are talking about the issue of physician-assisted suicide in general. All right. Thank you.